Today, Dubay will demonstrate his ability to make claims and provide nothing to back them up. Also, we'll have a special guest to tell us all about Polaris. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 98. NASA and modern astronomy say Polaris, the North Pole Star, is somewhere between 323 and 434 light years, or about two quadrillion miles, away from us. Firstly, note that is between 1 quadrillion 938 trillion to 2 quadrillion 604 trillion miles, making a difference of over 600 trillion miles. If modern astronomy cannot even agree on the distance to stars within hundreds of trillions of miles, perhaps their science is flawed and their theory needs re-examining. However, even granting them their obscurely distant stars, it is impossible for heliocentrists to explain how Polaris manages to always remain perfectly aligned straight above the North Pole throughout Earth's various alleged tilting, wobbling, rotating, and revolving motions. I'm actually surprised the debate crams so much into a single proof. Considering how padded out these proofs are, I would have expected Debay to have split this one proof into three. Let's start with the first claim. The NASA and scientists claim that Polaris is between 323 and 433 light years away. But this isn't a fault, it's a feature. Scientists are debating the distance that different methods gives us to Polaris. And this is a good thing. It means that scientists aren't just accepting the first result they get and declaring it as absolute truth. By making this statement, Dubé is tacitly admitting that he doesn't care about science or the scientific method. Dubé finds it problematic that science doesn't just pick an answer and stick to it. He thinks that it's a problem that science questions its own findings. Dubé wants one answer, and that one answer to be unquestionable. Scientists questioning their own findings is also a problem when you think about it from a conspiracy point of view. Dubé and others would have you believe that NASA is part of this worldwide conspiracy. If it's true that everything about space is made up by NASA, or whatever other group you want to blame, then why not just make a consistent figure? Why go through all the rigmarole to make up different figures? Why show inconsistency? There would be no way for anyone to check, so why not just pick a figure and stick to it? The next big problem is the use of the big numbers. For some reason, big numbers scare Dubé and others. There is no argument here except these numbers are really big. That's the argument. So what? The numbers are big. What difference does that make? Lastly, there's this statement. Even granting them their obscurely distant stars, it is impossible for heliocentrics to explain how Polaris manages to always remain perfectly aligned straight above the North Pole through Earth's various alleged tilting, wobbling, rotating, and revolving motions. Why is it impossible? It would have been nice if Dubé had presented us with an analysis of the figures given by NASA and had demonstrated how these figures make it impossible for Polaris to be observed regularly in its current position. This statement, along with many others in this section of proofs, is nothing more than a statement of incredulity. Dubé can't understand how stars' movements work, therefore it's wrong. Just because Dubé can't understand something doesn't make it wrong. 99. Viewed from a ball Earth, Polaris, situated directly over the North Pole, should not be visible anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere. For Polaris to be seen from the southern hemisphere of a globular Earth, the observer would have to be somehow looking through the globe, and miles of land and sea would have to be transparent. Polaris can be seen, however, up to over 20 degrees south latitude. Proof 99 is nothing but a lie. Dubé doesn't give a source for his claim that Polaris can be seen from 20 degrees south. He provides no example. He has nothing, and that's because it's made up. In researching for an example of Polaris being visible from anywhere in the Southern Hemisphere, all I could find were Flat Earthers parroting the claim, but no actual evidence. 100. If Earth were a ball, the Southern Cross and other Southern constellations would all be visible at the same time from every longitude on the same latitude, as is the case in the North with Polaris and its surrounding constellations. Ursa Major and Minor and many others can be seen from every northern meridian simultaneously, whereas in the south, constellations like the Southern Cross cannot. 
This proves that the southern hemisphere is not turned under, as in the ball model, but simply stretching further outwards away from the northern center point, as in the flat earth model. I don't know why Dubay thinks that the southern cross should be visible from every longitude on the same latitude in the southern hemisphere. For starters, Dubay compares the southern cross to Ursa Minor, as if they were counterparts. Ursa Minor is located very close to the celestial north pole. In fact, Polaris is one of the stars that makes up Ursa Minor. The Southern Cross, by contrast, is located quite a bit off in the Celestial South Pole. There is absolutely no reason why the Southern Cross constellation should be visible from all Southern longitudes. Proof 101 is the same as 99, except that instead of lying about Polaris, Dubay makes up some shit about Sigma Octantis. This includes the claim that it can't be seen at all with a telescope, and that it's probably just made up by the Illuminati, or whatever. 102. Some heliocentrists have tried to suggest that the pole star's gradual declination overhead as an observer travels southward is proof of a globular Earth. Far from it, the declination of the pole star or any other object is simply a result of the law of perspective on plane, flat surfaces. The law of perspective dictates that the angle and height at which an object is seen diminishes the farther one recedes from the object, until at a certain point, the line of sight and the seemingly uprising surface of the earth converges to a vanishing point, i.e. the horizon line, beyond which the object is invisible. In the ball earth model, the horizon is claimed to be the curvature of the earth, whereas in reality, the horizon is known to simply be the vanishing line of perspective based on the strength of your eyes, instruments, weather, and altitude. Dubay takes a perfectly legitimate observation regarding Polaris and dismisses it by using the flat earth magic word, perspective. Dubay never actually addresses the problem with Polaris on a flat earth. Hell, Dubay doesn't even bother to present the problem to its readers and viewers. By not presenting the problem with the flat earth, Dubay is shielding his audience. Well, today I have with me a special guest that's going to explain exactly how Polaris proves that the only shape that the earth can be is a globe. So imagine you stood at the North Pole and you look up and 90 degrees above you is the pole star Polaris. You then pick a direction, any direction, but for every 111.3 kilometers you travel in that direction, Polaris will drop by one degree in the sky. And this is repeatable over and over and over. Every 111.3 kilometers, Polaris will drop one degree in the sky. You can then stop and you can travel east or west around in a big circle until you come back to that point. And while you're traveling in that big circle, the angle of Polaris in the sky won't change. But then you resume in the direction you started and again, every 111.3 kilometers, Polaris will drop one degree in the sky until you hit the equator or until Polaris hits that horizon, at which point a southern celestial pole appears. And it behaves in exactly the same way. And then you've got to ask yourself, what geometric shape will allow that to happen? But you see, for this to happen, the tangent of that geometric shape must always be at 90 degrees to the center of that shape. The tangent line, which is the line we are using to measure the angle of Polaris in the sky, must always be at 90 degrees. And the only shape that allows that to happen is a sphere. Now, flat earthers will tell you that Polaris will drop in the sky due to perspective, but simple trigonometry will debunk this. On a flat earth, simple trigonometry will show that Polaris, to behave in this way, must physically be at a different height for each of the observers along that flat earth. It simply is impossible on a flat earth. Polaris proves the globe beyond doubt. Proof 103 is the same as 100 except using Ursa Major. Again, Dubay tells us where a constellation should be visible from, but provides no reasoning for his claim. Proof 104 is the same as 100 except using the constellation of Bulpecula, Taurus, Leo, and Pisces. Proof 105 is the same as 100, except using the constellations of Libra, Aquarius, Virgo, and Orion. Well, we finally passed a halfway point. I'm tend to say that it's all downhill from here, but I feel like this whole project has been nothing but downhill. I want to give a big thank you to Conspiracy Cats for both lending his voice and his explanation of Polaris. You can find a link to his channel in the description, and you should definitely go subscribe to him.